Welcome to another episode of Mutual Growth, a podcast by Penn Community Bank. I'm your host, Aaron Clark. After the show is over, be sure to check out the show notes and links to resources at pencommunitybank.com slash podcast. All right, Kirsten, welcome back to the show. Thank you. We're excited to have you on today in a new year, the first episode of 2023 and no better place to start for Penn Community Bank, a growing institution than with a uh, with our HR maestro and all of the exciting stuff that's happening on your side of the ball with um, hiring and opportunities with the bank. So before we dive into all of that, just can you give us just a real quick background on yourself and how you uh, became a part of the Penn Community Bank? Sure, I'd be happy to. So I live in historic Bristol Borough with my husband and two daughters, just a short walk from our Mill Street office, which is awesome. I'm the Vice President and Human Resources Manager, and this year I'll be with the bank for 12 years, uh, which is hard to believe. I started my career at the bank as an intern, working in Human Resources with our current Chief HR Officer, Georgian McKenna, and the rest is history. So I oversee the bank's recruiting, team member relations, performance management, and DE&I functions. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Um, so let's begin at the beginning, right? You start as an intern, you mentioned that, can you talk to us about what that experience was like? Did you have an interest in coming to work for a bank and you just took an internship opportunity? Was it just local and you thought it was a good idea? How did, uh, how'd that play out? Yeah. So that's kind of what it was. You know, I was a sophomore in college at the time I needed a summer job and, uh, my aunt worked in banking and she suggested that I apply to be a summer teller. So that's what I did. And at the time, George Ann was new to the bank. She was the new HR director and she had a lot of projects that she needed to work on. So she brought me on as her intern and she slowly just started teaching me about all sorts of HR functions. You know, I came in not knowing anything about HR or really about banking. um, And I just learned so much that first summer and not just about HR and banking, but also how to work in a professional office environment. You know, it was my first office job. And so it was just really a great experience. So I kept coming back. It's always uh, the hallmark of a good internship, right? You keep coming back. That's (laughs) right. Is that internship opportunity or program still something that's available for someone who's maybe out there in the same situation? Yeah, so when I was working as an intern, I think there were maybe two or three of us. And in fact, a couple of the people that I remember working the same time I was working as an intern are still with the bank today also, um, and also in VP level positions, one in marketing and one in commercial lending. So today I would say we probably have about five to six interns who work part-time year round. And then a few more that usually work over the summer months when they're home from school. Um, And some of them are seniors in high school who are part of a co-op program, and the rest of them are usually college students. Um, They work in departments like human resources, marketing, IT, deposit operations, commercial lending, uh, branch administration, so really all over the bank. Um, And we also have interns who work in the summer months in our branches. So there's opportunities really across the board. Yeah, I think that's a good transition for what I wanted to cover, which is as someone who came from outside of financial services to work for a bank, I think what a lot of people think either um, as they're looking for work or they interact with someone who maybe has a job at a bank is they go, well, if you work at a bank, you must be in a branch or a teller. It's kind of numbers and, and interest rates. Obviously, as you went through the list of opportunities for interns, there's a wide range of departments and and background professional skills that the bank needs. Um, So let's kind of begin there. What is the most common misconception that you and your team deal with um, when recruiting or, or seeking applicants to come work at a bank, even if they're not in a traditional financial services role? What kind of hurdles do you have to overcome to convince them a bank might be a good opportunity to to start? Yeah, that's a great, a great question. You know, I think most people, when they think of jobs in banking, 
think about what they experience of the bank, which is typically the branch environment. So they're thinking about those teller or customer service roles or maybe their mortgage lender. But what a lot of people don't realize is a bank is a business just like any other. And so we need HR, we need marketing, we need accounting, um, we have operations teams. And those are the people who work behind the scenes to, of course, make sure that the customer has a seamless experience. So um, I think one of the things that can be a challenge for us with recruiting is, yes, it would be great to find somebody who is an expert in their discipline and also has banking experience, but they're not always out there. And so for us, trying to find candidates with the requisite skill set who we can train on the banking, that um, you know is something that we usually try to kind of get out there with recruiting is, hey, you don't necessarily have to have banking experience to be successful here. We have programs and resources that we can use to help you make that transition. Oh, that's that's really important. It's certainly something the bank prides itself on, you know, that those training programs and kind of educating people into roles, especially if they're unfamiliar with kind of financial services as a career. Um, just to kind of put a spotlight on it, can you give us a snapshot of how, you know, the breadth of the job opportunities we mentioned from marketing to IT to deposit ops, right. give us a, give us the, the whirlwind tour of all the uh, opportunities or teams uh, inside the bank. Yeah. So I mentioned some of the more general business departments that you typically hear of um, on the operations side, we have building operations team that manages all of our facilities and is in charge of getting new branches up and running. Um, we have deposit operations, so they're interfacing with the branch network. They're, you know, subject matter experts in cards, online banking, IRA accounts, all sorts of things related to the customer experience. Um, we have lending operations as well. So in addition to these groups that you would typically think of being in business, um, there's also these operational teams that work in tandem with the front line to make sure that our customers have the best experience possible. That's awesome. Um, for some of these, what we would consider, you know, non-traditional banking roles, or maybe a role that someone isn't thinking of when they look at a job posting for a bank, can you describe what that opportunity might be, or how those, you know, that might be a stepping stone for a career development for someone? They will it, will it pigeonhole them into working only for banks if they're interested in facilities management, or is it, you know, kind of building universal skills? You know, it's really about building universal skills. Of course, there is specialized knowledge. Um, banking is a highly regulated industry, so there's a lot of compliance training that we do with our team members. Um, but every business needs recruiting and payroll professionals. Every business needs accounts payable. And so um, you don't necessarily have to have banking in order to be successful in those roles. There are things that will teach you that um, trainings that we can provide or send you to, to help you understand some of the nuances um, with banking that are important. And then there are some more specialized positions that require previous experience. You know, one that comes to mind is commercial credit analysts. Typically, you know, you have people with transferable skills but we're really looking for people who have experience doing that job. Mm -hmm. And so when we have a challenge with recruiting, we get creative. And a few years ago, we created a commercial credit training program so that we couldn't find candidates in the market who matched our desired skill set and experience. We could grow our own. You know, you think about our tagline, here we grow. And it's not just for our customers. It's really for team members as well. And that's just one way um, that the brand kind of gets reflected on the employer side. No, that's awesome. I don't want to. I don't want to cast too far aside someone who says, "But I like numbers, and I like going into branches, or I like I'm interested in business development and lending opportunities." For those that are interested in more of a traditional um, banking career or have set out in financial services. Um, can you walk through what the path might be for them or the job opportunities for them um, with Penn Community Bank? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of people on the front line have started at some point in their career in an entry level relationship building or sales position. So at Penn Community Bank, if you're coming in with no experience and you want to learn about that, the best place to learn is in our branch network. So we have people come in and start as a customer service representative or a relationship banker. And as they learn and grow and discover sort of what their niche 
interest is, there's opportunities for them through our internal job posting program to explore other areas of the bank. Um, some of them have a desire in advancing on the branch side and maybe becoming a sales and service manager or a branch manager. Some of them have a, a really high interest in lending. So we have mortgage lending positions, we have commercial lending positions, whether that's on the business development side or more of the administrative side. Um, so there's really something for everybody based on what their interests are. Now, and, and, and kind of the theme that keeps coming up is, is that training and opportunity um, um, for advancement and, and development inside the organization. Can you just highlight some of those programs or benefits that the bank does offer um, both internally and through maybe external education that helps uh, you know an applicant or a team member kind of move up through the ranks. Yeah, so I'll use myself as an example. You know, coming into the bank, I had a degree in education, so I knew that I needed to learn about business and banking. So some of the things that I took advantage of as a team member at Penn Community were um, our learning and development programs. We have internal programs to help team members build their technical skills or their interpersonal skills. We also have partnerships with, for example, the PA Bankers Association, and they have self-paced courses that you can take um, in analyzing financial statements or principles of banking to really help you get your bearings in that way. Um, I also utilized our tuition reimbursement program to get my MBA. And that was extremely helpful to me in my growth at, at the bank. So, you know, we have those learning programs that are more traditional or more formal education oriented. We also have, I mentioned the job posting program and a job shadow program. So our team members can have an opportunity to shadow another department in the bank or a particular job and learn more about what that person does and the skills that are necessary to be successful in that job. So whether it's the more formal training or something that's a little bit more hands-on on the job experience, we have both to offer people who are looking to grow their careers. So throughout this entire conversation, you've seemed very confident in the, in the answers here. Obviously, it's because you're used to giving them as part of your sales pitch for folks that are, sure. are uh, <laughs> interested in joining. So before we wrap up, can you give us what that, that sales pitch is for why someone maybe listening or watching should be uh, considering a career at Bank Community Bank? Absolutely. So, you know, maybe you've been in banking for a while and you want to experience and be a part of greater good banking at Penn Community Bank. Or maybe you've never worked in banking before, but you want to work for a values driven organization that really cares about the community. We are the largest mutual bank in eastern Pennsylvania, and we follow a people first model, whether that's our external customers and community or my internal customers, which, of course, are our team members. So, you know, that really makes a difference in the way that we do business. So I would say to anybody who's out there listening, if you want to apply your hard earned skills and experience at an inclusive organization where you'll have the opportunity to give back, not just through your work, but also through volunteer opportunities, that Penn Community is the place to be. And it doesn't hurt that we also offer competitive compensation and benefits as well. And I would be remiss, Erin, if I didn't mention that you would also get to work with an award-winning HR team. So that's my pitch. <laughs> a very, very good pitch and a very good plug there from the HR team. I like it. So before we sign off here, where can people go to learn about the careers at Penn Community Bank, see what jobs are, are posted right now, and maybe uh, reach out with any questions? Yes, so PennCommunityBank.com, we have our careers page. There you'll be able to learn about the jobs that we have available, as well as the types of benefits that we offer, and some um, videos that will really give you a window into what the culture is like at Penn Community. And I would say also our LinkedIn page is a great place to learn those things as well. And you can see posts from some of our team members. Um, I think that's always gives people sort of a good view of how they view their work at Penn Community Bank and what they like about it. Oh, that's awesome. We'll be sure to include links for both in the description for uh, the podcast here. Kirsten, thank you so much for taking a couple minutes to join us. Hopefully we fill up your inbox with a bunch of applications or questions that people have about mm -hmm. coming to join the team here at Penn Community Bank, but appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, Aaron. I appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Mutual Growth, a podcast by Penn Community Bank. 
Be sure to subscribe and leave us a rating. And as always, keep up with the latest from Penn Community Bank by following us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. For more information about this podcast, links to past episodes, or to learn more about Community First Banking, just visit PennCommunityBank.com slash podcast. Mutual Growth is the official podcast of Penn Community Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. It is produced for the benefit of current and prospective customers and partner organizations. This program is provided solely for educational and entertainment purposes. The information contained herein is based on sources believed to be reliable, but is not represented to be complete and its accuracy is not guaranteed. The opinions, views, and estimates expressed are those of the presenters at the date of production and are subject to change without notice. Please email marketing at pencommunitybank.com regarding booking or repurposing any part of this podcast. Thank you.